in Omaha for this value investing thing? I mean, people mm -hmm. think of this as kind of being a stodgier sort of people who've been coming for decades and decades mm -hmm. and people who have been longtime shareholders. Mm -hmm. What are you doing here? Because I see you at royal weddings and in Cannes, and I know you're like on the scene. <laughs> Where else Why would I want to be? Here? This is uh, Omaha is a place to be. This is this is special. This is a pilgrimage that I, as, as a businessman, as a, as a venture capitalist, still feel this need to, to come to, uh, in part because, you know, my partner Gary Tan and I, we came for the first time just last year, yeah. and we said, all right, this is something we need to participate in, because in a lot of ways, we are thinking for building for the longest term, because we meet founders from the very beginning. We're not value investors, by any means, um, but we are thinking along similar lines. What we heard Warren and Charlie talking about here in Omaha are the exact same values that we look for in founders. Uh, the same way they look for managers that they really believe in, um, we look for in entrepreneurs. And we want, we would love for, for our firm to one day have the kind of reach and impact and legacy that Berkshire Hathaway has had. Were you surprised by the meeting last year? Was it what you anticipated or? It, it actually was not what I anticipated. I, um, I'm very lucky my chief of staff is from Omaha and she had talked about this as an event that I really needed to not to not miss. It was something that, that growing up I remember hearing about in business school. It was something that you, you kind of, of, of hear of as a kind of mythical thing. Um, and then you show up here and you find, I mean, you find long lost business contacts. Uh, the C-suite is all milling about even a couple of days before the event gets started. Yeah. And, uh, and it's just a great place to be because everyone is so just, frankly, we're all just business nerds here uh, talking <laughs> about where the world is headed. And so it's some great conversation for the weekend. All right, let's talk about what's happening in social media. We mentioned mm -hmm. at the top of this that um, Facebook made some changes recently. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, this week it decided to go ahead and ban some of some the views that it thought were more extremist on its platform. Mm -hmm. As an expert in social media, as somebody who is constantly watching what's happening there, mm -hmm. what, what, what's your take on the evolution? I, I think this is a natural course of things. Um, I think a lot of folks will wonder why it took so long. Um, I think the, you know, I was on here probably six months ago, eight months ago, talking about peak social and how communities uh, like Reddit, but, but other platforms are starting to, to thrive because we're all pretty tired of this follower model where we follow individuals. And so it's also not surprising to me that Facebook just rolled out a redesign that looks awfully familiar, where they're pushing forward this idea of following a Facebook group and being part of a Facebook community instead of following like individuals. Like Reddit, uh, like Girlboss, a lot of community-based platforms that we're excited about are thriving now. And I think this is a signal from Facebook that they see this shift. They're, they're acknowledging to a certain extent this notion of, of peak social and realizing that people are retreating back to communities uh, as opposed to just following individuals. Because of the bad things that can happen. Yes, uh, and, and because when at the end of the day, uh, what is more sustaining for us as people uh, is, is the notion of community. In a lot of ways, traditional social media is pretty antisocial. We, we don't all wander around the world with a, a, a cadre of followers behind us listening mm -hmm. to every word. We do, however, operate this world through communities, whether there are small little text messaging groups of college friends or, or there are larger communities of you know, fellow girl bosses with whom we share financial advice. Um, that's how humans operate. And I think we're seeing this shift now uh, with Facebook. Let's talk about the IPO market. Sure. It, uh, it's pretty hot right now. Yes, it is. For most of the IPOs that have come out, not mm -hmm. all of them. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think as somebody who looks at this and thinks, okay, <laughs> the capital markets, great time, bad time, are mm -hmm. we late in the cycle? What, what does all this say to you and to people who are investors? Yeah. You know, we've, we've, we've been pleased by this broadly in the Valley. You can see a lot more CEOs feeling more excited about the notion of going public this year, given the success that these early IPOs have had. Um, firms that we very much admire, uh, like Andreessen Horowitz, have done phenomenally well in this market. And, you know, they're also long-term investors. So on the one hand, we know many of the companies in the initialized portfolio are still many, many years away from an IPO. Um, but we have some others, um, you know, like Instacart that could conceivably be doing this soon. I think the, the, the powerful opportunity, though, is how do we get into an environment where uh, potentially more retail investors, uh, more of the value can be captured in the public markets uh, at a time when there's just so much money privately, especially at the later stage? And, uh, and I think that's where you're seeing in, in some of these companies that are going public, 
Um, you, you're seeing opportunities that maybe a decade earlier would have been enjoyed uh, by the public markets um, that aren't as as available uh, because privates are gobbling it up. There, there's also this sense, though, among some people, and I, I don't know if this is a, a theme that you've picked up on in Silicon Valley mm -hmm. or not, but look, we could be nearing the end of a great business cycle and the end of a great market cycle, mm -hmm. and if you don't get out there and get public, uh, the markets could dry up and you could be left waiting for years to get back in. There's a, there, there is that sense. Um, it's so hard to time markets, of course. Um, and, and we do, because we invest so early, we do have a pretty long-term horizon for us. But when we think about this, I think the, the big alignment I would like to see made, and I think the biggest thing holding back a lot of founders, whether it's a good time or a bad time to go public, you know, market-wise, is finding an opportunity where they can get long-term focus even in a world of quarterly earnings reports mm -hmm. and I've seen more and more discussion which has been interesting to me about finding ways to to give different voting rights to shareholders based on how long they've held the stock what uh, and and we're starting to see this as a conversation more like and more you get two votes if you've been in for five years or longer this this idea you know there there's there's actually a firm that we back that's still in its infancy um, long-term stop long-term stock exchange mm -hmm. which wants to build an entire market based on this still in its infancy but I do think that one of the big issues and we, we talked about Elon the last time I was on here mm -hmm. one of the big issues CEOs especially this next generation of CEOs doesn't want to deal with is the idea of, of activist investors or or basically people who are not as aligned as they and their companies Short are timers. about building for the long term yeah. and and I can see the argument there I think as a former CEO as a as a former operator of a startup, uh, you, you would much rather the people who are holders of equity in your company be as long-term oriented as all the people within the building mm -hmm. who are themselves also holders. And, uh, and I think the better we can get alignment on that, uh, the better off we'll all be. Um, no, no immediate solutions in sight, though. And for the time being, yeah, I think, I think more CEOs are going to take advantage of the, the hot markets while they can. That's a really interesting perspective. Uh, Alexis, we'd love to have you back soon to talk more about all this. My pleasure, Becky. It's yeah. great to see you here. Likewise.